Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Intel's Alchemist GPUs are actually gaining a lot of momentum at the moment in terms of just general public perception. I think the idea of the third player is definitely intriguing, but there is a question, of course, as to the performance of these graphics cards. And the answer is, well, probably around an RTX 3070. This information comes to us via Grayman, who claims to have seen official documentation regarding the performance targets of Intel's GPUs, and it actually quite closely matches to other leaks, including my own. I was originally told that it was around probably an RTX 3080, but a couple of other sources told me this is probably untrue. Instead, the 3080 was probably referencing NVIDIA's 3080 Mobile. So in desktop terms, it was around, again, 3060 Ti to maybe a 3070. Of course, performance is always, well, interesting because it does depend, as always, on what which game you're playing or what application you're running. But yeah, uh, Intel's XE GPUs do seem to be indeed targeting for the higher-end SKUs, which is 512 execution units, an RTX 3070. And I know that this possibly could be a little disappointing to some, especially given that we're hearing so many rumors of, you know, what RDNA 3 or NVIDIA's Lovelace can bring to the table. But it really does come down to the question of, well, price. And we do know, of course, that Intel will be tapping into TSMC's 6NM process. This has already been confirmed by the company. Perhaps the piece de resistance with XE is possibly going to be XESS, or the upsampling solution. Sure, you can run it on even a Pascal GPU, but obviously the performance bump is higher if you're using uh, Intel's own graphics card because, well, basically you're running it natively on their GPU with their own hardware accelerating it. I've gone into this extensively before, and I'm also planning to do a much deeper dive on upsampling tech over the next well, let's say a couple of weeks. I'm going to be, oh, by the way, I'm going to be going on vacation. Uh, that's this Saturday. So for people wondering, there will be a little bit less content for me, although I am pre-prepping a couple of videos. It's one of the reasons I've been a little more quiet than usual on the channel. However, Amy will still be covering stuff while I'm away. So, well, don't worry. I've not been hit with a semi-truck. Possibly. Anyway, Getting back to the topic itself, however, Intel will definitely be a very interesting player in the industry. Intel's release will definitely be interesting for the industry, but again, with cards like the RTX 40 series possibly being up to twice as fast, maybe a little faster, I was told about 2.2 times faster, for example, with the 4080 versus the 3080. Well, yeah, I mean, does a card which does fit into, let's say, the 3070 tier of performance really really get the juices flowing? Well, my juices are flowing, I'll tell you, because, again, this is only the start of Intel's GPUs. We know, of course, that after Alchemist, they have several others, including the, unfortunately, I don't think such a cool name as Druid, when they've got things like uh, Battle Mage, but again, that's my opinion. But yeah, I think that Intel really is going to come down to pricing in terms of the success in the market. And I do suspect that Intel will try to be as cheap as possible. Now, it has somewhat flew under the radar that Intel graphics is largely now under the responsibility of Raja Kodori. Of course, we knew he was kind of in charge of like the graphics architectures, but now he's even responsible for profit and loss. Now, I have heard through the grapevine that originally Intel had kind of hoped to push the uh, HPG solutions as kind of like break even. And obviously this would have the benefit of, well, being cheaper and helping them get into the market. However, now that Raja is basically there kind of looking at the profit and loss col column and saying, hmm, this could also reflect negatively on him. I still feel, however, that Raja will be quite conservative in the pricing and try to get them out as cheaply as possible. Of course, what the final bill of materials will be on the products is going to be anyone's guess. We also know that the cards are going to be roughly around two gigahertz in terms of clock frequency. And we've already heard quite a lot of estimates in terms of the TDP of the cards. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as hot as let's say an RTX 3090. And of course, we've even been hearing about RTX 3090 super cards possibly being over 400 watts in terms of their power consumption. So again, 
I will be very curious to see what Intel does here. So I personally am really happy for Intel to release these RTX 3070 level of performance at a decent price point. It'll be very interesting to see how say ray tracing uh, performance is versus say Nvidia. And of course there is a ton of optimization too with the drivers. And I do think their drivers are going to be pretty robust. Lisa Pierce is, well, already gone on record and said that there's going to be a lot of features like hardware overclocking and tweaking support, which obviously is now a mandatory thing for modern day GPUs. If anything, I do think that Nvidia's driver control panel maybe needs a little bit of tweaking. And I'm still not 100% happy with AMDs. I do feel sometimes like you have to go for a few extra clicks maybe than what you want. Let me know actually in the comments down below, which control panels do you prefer? Which software do you prefer, Nvidia or AMD? I go between both because, well, obviously I review stuff and kind of do stupid projects. Personally, <laughs> like when I, when I use AMD, I'm like, I prefer AMD and when I'm using a video I'm like no wait I like these features in video so I think for me it's kind of like 50 50 the main feature I do really like with Nvidia if I'm totally honest would be Nvidia broadcast which I use a lot for these videos and also Nvidia's DLSS solution but now that AMD have FSR and now XESS is also looking pretty competitive it would be very interesting to see how the competitive landscape changes also, while we're on the subject of AMD, I'd like to quickly mention MI300. Yeah, sure, technically speaking, MI200 hasn't actually been released yet. This is going to be by the end of the year. And sure, the MI series is designed around high-performance computing, so not necessarily something that you would personally want in your PCIe slot. However, there is something very interesting concerning MI300. So MI200 is going to be an MCM design. So it's going to have basically two GCDs, at least according to the rumor. But with MI300, according to Kepler L2, I'll link of course his tweet, much like Grayman's in the video description, this is actually going to be doubled. So for those who are brilliant at math, you would have already realized, of course, this means four GCDs. Now I feel that GCD kind of isn't actually 100% the whole story, especially when it comes to RDNA 3. I've said multiple times that we have MCD and GCD for RDNA 3, but I think that that is really a simplification of how AMD kind of would probably like to label these things, these multiple chips. But yeah, for um, MI300, we're going to be seeing four GCDs. And I have heard that RDNA 4 also has a rather large increase in the number of chiplets, but I have no specifics, so I don't really want to put kind of information out there when I'm just purely guessing. But I wouldn't be surprised anyway if we see a similar methodology here with uh, AMD basically just ramping things up and kind of segmenting things more and more and more on their products. And of course, all of this is going to mean that we get ridiculously powerful GPUs into the future. I'm going to be very curious to see how this actually plays out, especially as we start to move from Lovelace to Hopper from NVIDIA. And obviously, uh, AMD will also be facing competition from Intel. I feel that HPG is going to be like an, okay, this is great for, you know, kind of more budget focused gamers. But of course, if you want like the bleeding edge performance, at the end of the day, a XE card is probably not going to be competing with like a 6900 XT or a 3080 Ti or whatever. But I am curious too, what the release timings for RDNA 3 and Intel's own cards will be in the longer term. Hmm. You know what? Graphics cards are getting a little bit interesting. Hopefully the prices remain fairly stable. Uh, with that said though, thank you very much for checking out the video. As always, if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video because it's YouTube land and also comment down below. What are you looking forward to from Intel's XE GPUs? Are you just wanting the competition or do you feel that you're not really that interested at the moment or Perhaps you're hoping that we'll see an increase in stock and availability. Let me know down below. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.